So our next speaker is Demeter Rusafot Dharma. Um, and the title of the talk is Lifting Rural Haitian Communities Out of Poverty Through Social and Technological Innovation. So Demeter um, is a manager of Amert's largest relief and sustainable development project in the Western Hemisphere. Um, he's based in Haiti and he's covering a wide range of welfare activities with all these projects with Amert. A native of Bulgaria, he is U.S. educated and has assumed directorship of Amur Haiti in 2004. So today his main area of work is in the northwest region of Anse Rouge, where he directs two large sustainable projects. One is a sea salt production facility, as well as a moringa tree planting project. So deep into uh, the power of the local community. His work impacts more than 80 villages uh, across the country and has at times employed up to 1,600 people in reforestation, soil cons conservation, relief, and more. So we are very excited to have you here. Uh, please welcome Demeter. Thanks, Caroline, for the introduction and greetings, everyone. Um, yeah, don't worry, some... Um, very important points about uh, the topic of um, community resilience during uh, time of disaster and also um, disaster capitalism. And um, even though I'm going to take you to a very uh, different context, um, there's a lot of uh, common points that uh, we're going to um, look at. Um, it's mostly um, in, the, in a very different context of very marginalized communities. Um, and Haiti, I think we all know, um, it is one of the, um, um, well, it's in the news a lot in, uh, with very somewhat distressing connotations. Okay. Um, so it has a reputation of a country that, uh, faces constant strength of disasters and, um, they're either human made or uh, nature caused. And it's kind of, it has become a case study, um, of that strips very quickly, um, the conventional approaches such as well as commonly called disaster capitalism. Um, it stripped them off of their veneer because it's littered with, uh, graveyards of good intentions, um, with, uh, by, um, basically failed projects and failed interventions that are parachuted and not engaging the community. Um, and, um, uh, the, the, um, there's also the context of the economic, uh, basically economic crisis, corruption, political, um, political crisis. Um, but in the Northwest, in the upper Northwest, and you see the white spots on the map kind of indicates the deforestation of the region. It's, um. Haiti in general is much more devastated than the neighboring Dominican Republic environmentally. And the uh, region of the Northwest is pretty much the desert of Haiti. It's one of those most hostile, hostile places in Haiti. Um, and, um, it's, um, it's also, well, where for us in Amarit, which is basically a humanitarian agency, um, what shifted us into a different approach happened during the, um, um, earthquake in 2010, when the great divide between the richest poor and, um, the richest 1% and the majority further deepened largely with a great, with the help of, um, outside interventions. And we, we sat together and we uh, realized we have to reinvent our approach. We have to, something is wrong. We, why we really evaluated, why are we in Haiti? Uh, what are we doing? And we, and that's when we shifted into, um, an approach building local economies, um, and, uh, which led to the formation of the spree, um, and a shift from humanitarian relief into more community, community driven sustainability. Um, the spree stands for development. It's a, the acronym is in French. So it's kind of reversed, but it stands for development, social entrepreneurship, and integrated rural production. 
Um, so with our model of development, we seek to complete, to uh, lead, to complete the circle from disaster into a long-term development that's um, led by the communities and that assists them into moving into a sustainable um, development that's led by themselves. Um, so what, um, what defines the development approaches Tom, Tom talks often about is the importance of relationships. Um, it's uh, an integration with the local communities. So we, um, we are basically um, creating very close relationships, focusing on uh, creating very close um, integration with the needs and desires of the local community. And, um, and as a result, our programs are quite diverse. It's not just Moringa or CISOT, um, but it extends into a women's microcredits, education, um, watershed protection, um, et cetera. Um, a lot of it is based on, it's focused on building local economies. Um, and uh, this is uh, crucial. It's, it cannot happen without a very close relationship with, uh, well, they, uh, an agency would call them the beneficiaries, but actually they're the key actors. Uh, beneficiaries put them into a very passive role. And um, actually they are in the lead driving seat. And uh, shifting into this kind of understanding of who they are helps us, helps an organization create a bridge to sustainability because it's forced, it's um, basically creates a kind of like a driving force or it encourages a driving force within these communities to, uh, to move away from. And, and this, I'll go back to the previous slide. This women I took a picture of, they walk for three hours. Um, in the cot sun and they start their walk around 3.30 in the morning. Um, they reach the salt flats, salt ponds around five o'clock and they, um, they begin, they basically, uh, spend, uh, hours waist deep in the hot Caribbean sun, shifting from, through coarse salt crystals, um, which creates cuts on their skin. And, uh, in order to just pay that enough, um, um, income to pay for their kids, um, books or to put a little foot on the table. So it's basically substance living. Um, so how do you move from this reality to, a, an approach, which actually creates empowered, um, marginalized, the most marginalized in this society are the women who are actually not listened to, not. Um, they are not supported in any way, um, shape or form. How do you actually uh, generate hope and resilience within, within them and, uh, challenge the existing gender balances, um, so that each person can become an agent of change, uh, that's capable of transforming their own lives and the lives of their communities. So, uh, and also in the process, and I. And Tom mentioned that there are a lot of things actually that he talked about that might be pertinent for a developed country like the U.S., but it's actually very, very interestingly inherent in Katie, where there is a great fragmentation in society. And so a big purpose in, of the, of the development is to create the mechanisms of these women, of this and men to actually, uh, work together and, uh, uh, create a feeling of trust and self-confidence and, uh, um, and this is one example, um, of moving from the traditional salt basins that, um, uh, women and, uh, and salt producers, um, they produce the salt on their own, uh, in individual basins. And this is basically, uh, a modernized facility, which was created by hand, uh, but uh, in a desert, which was pre previously inundated by after every rain and now uses solar power and uh, gravity, um, through interconnected shallow ponds to produce, um, much greater amounts of salt, uh, than traditional basins. And, um, 
this particular facility uh, produces about 30% of the salt required by Haiti and invests all the revenue back into the women's self-help group. Uh, 